The impermeable sands make it possible for the waters to flood the wetlands for many months of the year. Depending on the quantity of water accumulated, we will find areas of marsh vegetation, shallow pools and grazing pasture. The cattails and common reeds that colonize the wetlands comprise the dominant vegetation in this largest bird sanctuary in Europe. of landscape is to be found at the point of contact between the sands of the beaches and the clays of the wetlands, known as the Vera, they are humid places covered in pasture and bulrushes. stretch the Kotos, large expanses of Mediterranean forest and scrubland, where cork trees alternate with pines, junipers with rock roses, rosemary and lavender, heather and brambles. Whereas in the wetlands we can observe teeming bird life, the Kotos are the realm of the amphibians and the mammals, and the ideal place for the Iberian lynx to live. Unfortunately, ideal habitats like those of Doñana are fast disappearing from the map. With the reduction of the forests, the lynx population have become isolated, which has led to endogamy with the resulting weakening of the species. To this must be added the fact that successive epidemics of myxomatosis and viral hemorrhage disease have decimated the rabbit population, which makes up 90% of the lynx's diet. Together, these circumstances have turned the Iberian lynx into the most threatened feline on the planet. In the past 25 years, its population has fallen spectacularly, and during the 1990s, the threat of extinction seemed closer than ever. In addition, given the lack of food, it came dangerously close to inhabited areas where it came into contact with wildcats from which it caught diseases against which it had no defense. There were frequent encounters with dogs, and as if that wasn't enough, it brushed up against its worst enemy. Man has not been a good neighbor for the wolf or the bear, and our treatment of the lynx would be no different. Human activity is contrary to the interests of the lynx. Even in privileged environments like Doñana, the list of dangers is endless. The cars on the roads, the poison bait set to control other species, and it is still even possible to find poachers. On the other hand, farmers and cattle herders need to fence off their lands, bring in machines to work their fields, use fertilizers, and move their cattle and horses around. And there is also the problem of territoriality. The Iberian lynx needs space in which to live, and in times of great urban developments and the construction of motorways, that is a luxury even for humans. And we can make do with two or three bedroom flats, whereas a lynx needs a territory of between four and five square kilometers. But the factors that lead to the eradication of the species are fortunately reversible. If the hand of man lies behind all of them, the aim must be to turn the main destroyer of nature into a civilized being who respects his surroundings. In short, 
We need a change of mentality. One important aspect is educating the people in the area where lynxes are going to be reintroduced, making them aware so that there is total support from the local population. The people in the surrounding area have to be in agreement and back the reintroduction. If not, they will boycott the reintroduction and the lynx will not be able to continue.